In an alternate timeline, the US and Russia are still at each other's throats. A full-blown war is not an option for both of them, so they have reverted to spying. But the traditional spies have also become outdated and easy to catch. Hence, the Russians have formed a group of female spies who have mastered the art of seduction. They find their targets, seduce them, have coitus with them, and then extract the required information. Sounds like a pretty good deal for the victims. The opening scene introduces Dominika Igorova, a prominent ballet dancer from Russia. Ever since her teens, she has been dancing and taking care of her ailing mother. One day, Dominika entrusts her mother to a caretaker and heads to work. She meets with various guests, including her uncle Ivan, who serves as the deputy director of Russia's Foreign Intelligence Service, SVR. During the meet and greet, a gangster named Dmitry Ustinov asks Dominika for a picture and uses the opportunity to touch her inappropriately. Shortly after, the performance begins, and Dominika dances beautifully, impressing the the audience. Unfortunately, soon her dance partner jumps and lands on her leg, breaking it badly. As a result, Dominica is rushed to the hospital for emergency surgery. Following this, we are introduced to Nate Nash, a CIA agent working in Moscow. One day, as he is about to meet one of his assets in Gorky Park, he is unexpectedly confronted by the police. Swiftly thinking on his feet, Nate creates a distraction by firing shots at the ground. This ensures the safety of the Russian mole, codenamed Marble, who escapes without being identified. However, Nate is taken into custody by the authorities during the chaos. He is then escorted to the safety of the American Embassy, where he meets his superiors. They inform him that Marble is safe, but he is to be deported back to the US due to his mistake. The next day, Ivan visits the director of the SVR and General Vladimir Korchnoi. They show him video footage of Nate's meeting in Gorky Park and explain that their primary interest lies in the unidentified individual. The scene then shifts back to Dominica, who wakes up in a hospital bed to discover that her leg is now encased in a metal frame. She is devastated when she realizes that she will never dance again. Months pass, but Dominica is still walking with the help of a cane. One day, Uncle Ivan visits her and reveals that her replacement has been found, which means that her workplace will no longer provide her with any benefits. Hence, he offers to help Dominica and asks her to come to him once she's ready. Before leaving, though, he hands her an envelope containing intimate pictures of her former dance partner and her replacement as well as a recording of their conversation, which implies that her partner intentionally caused the accident so that his girlfriend could take her place. This revelation angers Dominica, so she goes straight to the theater to keep an eye on her former partner and his girlfriend. After watching them practice, she follows them to the steam room, where they start making out. In a fit of rage, Dominica attacks them with her cane, exacting her vengeance. On her way back, she stops by a phone booth and reports the incident as an accident. <laughs> Whoopsie. After this, Dominica, now with her career in ruins, turns to her uncle for help. He agrees to assist her, but only if she returns the favor. The SVR is interested in gaining more information on the gangster from earlier, Dimitri. So he asks Dominica to befriend him and earn his trust using her feminine charms. Though hesitant, Dominica has no other choice, as her mother's medical expenses are too damn high. That night, Dominica goes to the hotel where Dimitri is staying, dressed beautifully, and heads to the bar to catch his eye. As as she expected, Dimitri approaches her and asks how he can assist her. She expresses her desire to feel special once again, and they proceed to a private room, leaving Dimitri's guards outside. After a while, he asks her to undress and immediately gets to work like a madman. But right then, a person wearing a black helmet enters the room and murders Dimitri. The intruder then throws a coat at Dominica to cover her bloodied body and rescues her through the back door. The man turns out to be an SVR agent named Constantine, sent by Ivan. Soon after, Ivan comes to Dominica and presents her with a choice. Either become an SVR operative or face execution for witnessing Dimitri's murder. As expected, she chooses to work for them. Following this, Dominica is enrolled in the harsh and rigorous State School 4, which specializes in training sparrows, SVR operatives skilled in using sex sexpionage to seduce their targets. I'm sorry, that was awesome. Upon her arrival, she is greeted by Matron, the headmistress of Sparrow, who gives her a new identity and leads her inside. The very next day, classes commence, and Matron delivers a speech on the current world chaos, emphasizing how Russia is the only country willing to make sacrifices to fix it. She also 
also announces to the students that their bodies now belong to the state and they are obligated to perform any task assigned to them. In the next scene, Nate meets with a CIA panel who decides to suspend him for his blunder in Russia. However, Nate argues that he has worked with Marble for years and that nobody else can be trusted. His plea is eventually taken into consideration and he is given a second chance to redeem himself. Nate is then assigned to the nearest city, Budapest, to re-establish contact with Marble. But unknown to them, their every move is being monitored by the SVR. Back in State School 4, Matron teaches the Sparrows how to identify what their target wants. She displays several images on TV and asks them to identify their wants. The first one is incorrectly answered by an arrogant student named Victor, and Dominica corrects him. This makes him the laughing stock in front of everyone. Another female student correctly guesses the second, and she is summoned to the front of the class in order to satisfy a guy. The girl gets down on her knees. However, she is unable to do so. The following day, the students are asked to welcome a troop of soldiers who have recently returned from combat. Dominica selects a young man and takes him to a private room where she pleases him. Later, the performance is observed by Matron and the other students. Matron comments on Dominica's performance, saying that her technique was good, but she still hasn't learned to give herself up. After class, as Dominica is taking a shower, Victor comes from behind and tries to assault her, but she bravely defends herself by hitting him with a water tap. This incident causes a huge uproar, and General Vladimir himself arrives at the school to investigate. He asks Dominica why she did it, to which she responds that she serves the state, not her fellow students. In the next class, Dominica is called to the front by Matron. While Vladimir watches through a CCTV camera, Matron presents a picture of Victor and asks Dominica to identify his desires. Just then, Victor is brought into the room, and Matron orders Dominica to give him what he wants. Our protagonist undresses herself and sits on the table with her legs open, egging him to take her. However, Victor, who is still terrified from the earlier incident, leaves without even touching her. Dominica then answers Matron's question that he wants power. This impresses Vladimir, so he assigns her to a mission in Budapest. Her job is to gain Nate's trust and reveal Marble's identity. Maybe emasculate a few more a-holes while you're at it. Agreeing to the mission, Dominica travels to Budapest and shares accommodation with a fellow sparrow, Marta, under the supervision of SVR station chief Maxim Volontov. She then begins following Nate and goes to the same swimming pool where he goes. She intentionally bumps into him and has a brief chat, pretending to be a translator for the embassy. The next day, Dominica heads to the swimming pool but doesn't find Nate there. Furthermore, she learns that her ID is missing. It turns out that Nate has already figured out that she's a Russian spy trying to uncover Marble's identity. He reports this to his superiors and recognizes her potential value. Hearing this, his superiors grant him permission to get closer to Dominica to gather more information. Later, Dominica visits the embassy and discovers Marta talking with an American politician named Stephanie Boucher. Not long after, Nate approaches Dominica and confesses to taking her ID from the pool. Upon realizing that he's aware of her mission, she reveals her true intentions. The two then have a short conversation and agree to meet for dinner the following day. Afterwards, Dominica returns to her apartment and searches Marta's room, where she discovers that Marta has been tasked with buying confidential information from Stephanie. The next day after work, she tails the station chief, Maxim, to a bar and requests him to provide her more time by sending a good report to Moscow. In order to make him do so, Dominica prods him into hitting her. Now that his act is caught on cameras, she blackmails him into sending a better report, or else she'll turn him into the police. Meanwhile, Nate is waiting for her at the restaurant, but when she doesn't show up for a long time, he leaves, assuming that she ditched him. Unbeknownst to him, Dominica follows him to his place. She rings the doorbell and he covertly lets her in. Nate frantically inquires how she found his place, and Dominica turns up the TV volume to ensure that they can't be overheard before asking him about what happened in Gorky Park. After receiving the answer, she kisses him, but he stops her midway and asks her to go home. The following day, Dominica receives an unexpected visit from Ivan, who wants to check on her progress with Nate. Feeling pressured to buy more time, she makes up a lie and tells him that she's also working on Stephanie's case with Marta, but will require additional funding. Ivan gives it some thought and decides to leave for now. While getting his coat, Dominica manages to sneak a look at his passport to gather intel on him. Later that evening, Dominica returns home to shockingly find Marta's lifeless body in the 
the bathtub before she can even comprehend what happened. Constantine, the same SVR agent from earlier, appears from behind and grabs her by the neck. He then explains that this is what happens to those who share secrets. Meanwhile, Nate informs his superiors about Marble's new message, which confirms that Dominica is a sparrow. Although his superiors view her as a threat, Nate believes that she's still recruitable. The next evening, he brings Dominica to her apartment and admits that he knows her real identity. Dominica, in turn, reveals her story, emphasizing that her only concern is her mother's safety. Nate then offers her a deal to become a double agent for him, promising her protection in return. After thinking it over, Dominica asks if she can trust him. He assures her that she can, and the two end up becoming intimate. In the morning, Dominica meets with Nate's superiors, who subject her to a lie detector test to assess her reliability. Is this film a poorly cobbled together spy story that's using your body to sell tickets? Yes. She's telling the truth, sir. When she passes the test, she asks for money, claiming that she can buy them information from Stephanie Boucher. On Friday, Dominica travels to London with Maxim to meet Stephanie and execute the transaction. She stays in a hotel room that the CIA has specially prepared for her, with security cameras and a set of discs hidden under a desk, which she can swap for the real ones later. Shortly after, Stephanie arrives at the hotel, and Dominica approaches her, claiming that she was sent by Marta. Once Stephanie is convinced, she hands over the discs in exchange for the money. Dominica pretends to authenticate the discs, but in reality, she switches them with the fake ones. After the deal, Stephanie realizes that she's being monitored by American intelligence agents. In a state of panic, she throws the money in the trash and tries to cross the street. But unfortunately, she only ends up getting hit by a truck and dying on the spot. Guess she should have looked both ways. Russian agents watching the whole incident assume that their mission has been compromised. They also suspect that Dominica and Maxim were the ones who tipped off the Americans, so the two are ordered to return to Moscow. Upon their arrival, Ivan seizes the discs and apprehends both Dominica and Nate. Despite their protests of innocence, they endure excruciating torture for days, and Maxim is even executed. However, Dominica remains adamant in her denial of involvement with the Americans. Eventually, Ivan begins to believe her and allows her to go back to Budapest to carry out her original mission of extracting Marble's identity. Upon returning with Nate, Dominica enjoys a romantic evening with him at his residence. However, in the middle of the night, she wakes up to discover Constantine subjecting Nate to torture in order to obtain Marble's identity. At first, Dominica feigns complicity with complicity? Yeah, with Constantine, and even assists in inflicting harm on Nate. But when he is distracted, she assaults him, enabling Nate to break free from his restraints. The two then team up against Constantine and manage to take him down, but they endure serious injuries during this process. In the next scene, Dominica wakes up at the hospital, where she receives a surprise visit from General Vladimir. Shockingly, he reveals himself as the Mole, Marble. Vladimir, who is a former patriotic official, confesses that he became disillusioned with Russia's rampant corruption when his sick wife was denied treatment from an American doctor, fearing that he will soon be caught and his sacrifice will be in vain. Vladimir instructs Dominica to expose him to Ivan. Doing so would make her a national hero and allow her to replace him as a mole. Dominica thinks the idea is absurd, but after a lot of convincing, she decides to turn herself into the authorities. She asks to speak to the Russian ambassador, and when her wish is granted, she explains that she has the name of the mole. However, she will only reveal his name in exchange for her freedom. In the aftermath of the conversation, an exchange meeting is scheduled at an airport. Nate is assigned to accompany Dominica in order to confirm the mole's identity. Entity. He is deeply upset as he feels used and betrayed by Dominica's actions. He feels used? <laughs> That's rich. However, she is a surprise for him. Shortly after, the Russians approach them with the mole, whose face, when uncovered, turns out to be Ivan. It is revealed that Dominica had been fabricating evidence to frame her uncle ever since she arrived in Budapest and even blamed him for the botched exchange in London. Shocked, Nate quickly confirms Ivan as the mole, and just after the exchange, Ivan is shot by a Russian sniper. After the exchange ends, Dominica is taken away in a helicopter. In the final scene, we see her being honored in a Russian military ceremony, attended by General Vladimir. Dominica is now living a good and free life with her mother, something which she had always dreamt of. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.